Canadians, please give me a few moments of your valuable time to understand why our country is headed towards poverty and economic collapse if we don't change course. The Parliamentary Budget Officer estimates that from now until 2029, our government will spend $214 billion more than it brings in. Imagine the state racking up $214 billion on a credit card and we're the ones stuck paying the bill. This year alone, there's a projected deficit of $46 billion. That's $6 billion more than what Trudeau promised just a few months ago. Let's get one thing clear. Trudeau has racked up more debt than every Canadian Prime Minister before him combined. Think about that. For a government that loves to preach about sustainability, their spending habits are anything but. There's a dangerous delusion in this country that anything the government gives you is free, but it's not. It comes straight out of your future paycheck with interest. The average Canadian family now pays more in taxes than they do on food, housing, and clothing combined. Let that sink in. 43% of your earnings are taken by the government, which means that from January 1st to June 5th, you are effectively working for free to fund the government. And 11 cents of every tax dollar goes just to paying interest on the debt that the government has already racked up. That's 5% of your hard-earned income going towards nothing but interest payments. Justin Trudeau once famously said that he doesn't think about monetary policy and that the budget will balance itself. This is pure delusion. It's time we stop taking economic advice from a man who claims to be numerically dyslexic and instead listen to real economic thinkers, people like Milton Friedman, who understood the dangers of unchecked government spending. Keep your eye on one thing and one thing only, how much government is spending, because that's the true tax. Every budget is balanced. There is no such thing as an unbalanced federal budget. You're paying for it. If you're not paying for it through it in the, in the form of explicit taxes, you're paying for it indirectly in the form of inflation or in the form of borrowing. The thing you should keep your eye on is what government spends. And the real problem is to hold down government spending as a fraction of our income. And if you do that, you can stop worrying about the debt. Some Canadians might think, well, I don't mind paying more in taxes if it means progress, but what does that even mean? When you look at the corruption in Canada, it's clear that this line of thinking is deeply flawed. Recently, it came to light that $330 million from the Sustainable Technology Development Fund ended up in the pockets of corporations close to the Liberal Party. That's one third of the fund's entire budget stolen from taxpayers. If we use this as a benchmark, it means that 15% of the average Canadian family's income is being siphoned directly into the bank accounts of the government's friends. Between the theft and interest payments, that means 20% of the average Canadian family's earnings vanquish without providing any real benefit. The solution to this problem is simple. Stop all unnecessary spending immediately and put a long-term plan in place to pay down the debt. If we keep spending more than we bring in, bankruptcy is inevitable. If you think the cost of living crisis is bad now, just wait until hyperinflation hits and money itself becomes worthless. This isn't a hypothetical. It's happened before. In ancient Egypt, the Roman Empire, and in Weimar Germany, just to name a few. The story is always the same. Reckless government spending leads to oppressive taxes and worthless currency. Every time the government dangles a free social program in front of you, remember that it's not free. They're stealing your hard-earned dollars, giving you back pennies, and expecting your gratitude in return. It's time we put an end to this madness.